Last night, I dreamt I went to Mandalay again. It seemed to me I stood by the iron gate leading to the drive. And for a while, I could not enter, for the way was barred to me. Then, like all dreamers, I was possessed of a sudden with supernatural powers and passed like a spirit through the barrier before me. The drive wound away in front of me, twisting and turning as it had always done. But as I advanced, I was aware that a change had come upon it. Nature had come into her own again, and little by little had encroached upon the drive with long, tenacious fingers. On and on wound the poor thread that had once been our drive. And finally, there was Mandalay. Mandalay, secretive and silent. Time could not mar the perfect symmetry of those walls. Moonlight can play odd tricks upon the fancy. And suddenly it seemed to me that light came from the windows. And then a cloud came upon the moon and hovered an instant like a dark hand before a face. The illusion went with it. I looked upon a desolate shell with no whisper of the past about its staring walls. We can never go back to Mandalay again. That much is certain. But sometimes, in my dreams, I do go back to the strange days of my life, which began for me in the south of France. What the devil are you shouting about? Who are you? What are you staring at? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to stare, but I... I only thought... Oh, you did it? You, well, what are you doing here? I was only walking. Well, get on with your walking. Don't hang about here screaming. I'll never come to Monte Carlo out of season again. Not a single well-known personality in the hotel. Stone cold. Wait up. Gasson, call him. Tell him to get me some... Why, it's Max de Winter. How do you do? How do you do? I'm Edith Van Hopper. It's so nice to run into you here. Just when I was beginning to despair of finding any old friends here in Monte. But do sit down and have some coffee. Mr. DeWitter's having some coffee with me. Go and ask the stupid waiter for another cup. I'm afraid I must contradict you. You shall both have coffee with me. Gasson, coffee, please. Cigarette? No, thank you. You know, I recognized you just as soon as you came in. Though I haven't seen you since that night at the casino at Palm Beach. <laughs> Perhaps you don't remember an old woman like me. Are you playing the tables much here at Monte? No, I'm afraid that sort of thing ceased to amuse me years ago. I can well understand that. As for me, if I had a home like Mandalay, I should certainly never come to Monte. I hear it's one of the biggest places in that part of the country, and you just can't beat it for beauty. What do you think of Monte Carlo? Or don't you think of it at all? Oh, well, I think it's rather artificial. She's spoiled, Mr. DeWitter. That's her trouble. Most girls will give their eyes for a chance to see Monte. Wouldn't that rather defeat the purpose? Now that we've found each other again, I hope I shall see something of you. You must come and have a drink in my suite. I hope they've given you a good room. The place is empty, so if you're uncomfortable, mind you make a fuss. Your valet is unpacked for you, I suppose. I'm afraid I don't possess one. Perhaps you'd like to do it for me. Well, I... <laughs> I hardly think... Uh... Perhaps you can make yourself useful to Mr. DeWitt if he wants anything done. 
You're a capable child in many ways. And that's a charming suggestion, but I'm afraid I cling to the old motto. He travels fastest who travels alone. Perhaps you've not heard of it. Good night. What do you make of that? Do you suppose that sudden departure was intended to be funny? Come, don't sit there gawking. Let's go upstairs. Have you got the key? Yes, Mrs. Van Hopper. I remember when I was younger, there was a well-known writer who used to dart down the back way whenever he saw me coming. I suppose he was in love with me and wasn't quite sure of himself. Well, c'est la vie. By the way, my dear, don't think that I mean to be unkind, but you were just a teeny weeny bit forward with Mr. De Winter. Your effort to enter the conversation quite embarrassed me, and I'm sure it did him. Men loathe that sort of thing. Oh, come, don't suck. After all, I am responsible for your behavior here. Perhaps he didn't notice it. Poor thing. I suppose he just can't get over his wife's death. They say he simply adored her. Please don't bother. It doesn't really matter. Oh, leave that. Leave that. Go and lay another place at my table. Mademoiselle will have lunch with me. Oh, but I, I couldn't possibly. Why not? Oh, well, please don't be polite. I, it's very kind of you, but I'll be all right if they just change the cloth. I wasn't being polite. I should have asked you to have lunch with me, even if we hadn't upset the bars so clumsily. Come along. We needn't talk to each other if we don't feel like it. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'll just ha have some, some scrambled eggs. Oui, mademoiselle. What's happened to your friend? Oh, she's ill in bed with a cold. <laughs> I'm sorry I was so rude to you yesterday. The only excuse I can offer is that I've become boorish through living alone. You weren't really. You simply wanted to be alone and... Uh, tell me, is Mrs. Van Hopper a friend of yours or just a relation? No, she's my employer. I'm what is known as a paid companion. Oh, I didn't know companionship could be bought. I looked up the word companion in the dictionary once. It said, a friend of the bosom. <laughs> I don't envy you the privilege. Oh, she's very kind, really, and I have to earn my living. Haven't you any family? No, my, my mother died years and years ago, and then there was only my father, and, and he died last summer. And then I took this job. How rotten for you. Yes, it was rather, because, you see, we got on so well together. You and your father? Yes, he, he was a lovely person. Very unusual. What was he? A painter. Ah, was he a good one? Well, I thought so, but people didn't understand him. Yes, <laughs> that's often the trouble. He, he painted trees. It, at least, it was one tree. You mean he painted the same tree over and over again? Yes, you see, he had a theory that if you should find one perfect thing or, or place or person, you should stick to it. Do you think that's very silly? <laughs> Not at all. I'm a firm believer in that myself. And what did you find to do with yourself while he was painting his tree? Well, I sat with him and I sketched a little. I, I don't do it very well, though. Are oh, you going sketching this afternoon? Yes. Where? Oh, I haven't made up my mind. Oh, I'll drive you somewhere in the car. Oh, no, please, I didn't mean... Oh, nonsense. Finish up that mess and we'll get along. Thank you. It's very kind of you, but I'm not very hungry. Oh, come on. Eat it up like a good girl. Take long enough for that sketch. I shall expect a really fine work of art. Oh, no, don't look at it. It's not nearly good enough. Well, it can't be as bad as all that. Now, don't rub it all out. Let me see it first. Well, it's the perspective. Oh, I never can get it right. See, oh, dear. Tell me, is it um, the perspective that gives my nose that curious twist in the middle? Well, you're not a very easy subject to sketch. Your, no? your expression keeps changing all the time. Does it? Well, I'd, I'd concentrate on the view instead if I were you. Much more worthwhile. Rather reminds me of our coastline at home. Do you know Cornwall at all? Yes, I went there once with my father on holiday. I, I was in a shop once, and I saw a, a postcard with a beautiful house on it right by the sea. And I asked whose house it was, and the old lady said, that's Mandalay. I felt ashamed for not knowing. And Mandalay is beautiful. To me, it's just the place where I was born. I've lived in all my life. Now, I don't suppose I shall ever see it again.
We're, we're lucky not to uh, be home during the bad weather, aren't we? Huh. I, I can't ever remember enjoying swimming in England till, till June, can you? The water's so warm here that I could stay in all day. There's a dangerous undertow, and there's a man drowned here last year. I never have any fear of drowning, have you? Come, I'll take you home. 